What's up, everybody? This is Rambo, and um, it's nice to be back. Um, I had had a setback. I had a procedure done and thought I was going to pop back, and I didn't pop back. It wasn't nothing serious, but um, it took me time to get my breath back. It took me time to get myself back to where I'm normally at when I do videos, so I didn't do a video. But anyway, I want to touch on the Yamisi War. And um, the reason why I want to talk about the Yamisi War is because the Yamisi War deals with the melanated man. And we see, we have been told a filter. We have been given a filter. And when I say that, what I mean is they have given us our heroes. They have given us Martin Luther King that told, told us to allow white people to spit on us and beat on us and don't fight back. And if they spit on us, just take it. We have been given Malcolm X. We have been, been given um, uh, Marcus Garvey, who before he got to America, when he was in Jamaica, had a woman and turned around, cl claimed that he loved this woman, but turned around and um, spent the people money, said that he was going to get a school for the Jamaican kids to learn their history and, and to give them a better education, but turned around when the people was giving him money for the school, he turned around, spent the money, and after when the money was gone and he knew the people was going to come after after him, left her holding the bag and he came to America and then told us to go to Africa, a place that he, he, he himself had never been. These are the so-called heroes that we was hanging up in our house because we had no... We had no um, education or no wisdom to understand that we have a very powerful history that they have hidden from us. And now we're coming to the point, we're coming into ourselves. We're, we're, we're waking up. So they can no longer give us the filter that they have always given us. They can no longer give us the pacifier, so they're at a standstill. I want to talk about the Yamisi War because it's, a, it's one of the most deadliest wars that took place in America. And it happened on Good Friday, April 15th, 1715 to 1717. That wasn't the only war, but this was the most deadliest war. The Yamisi Indians resided in Georgia, Alabama, South and North Carolina, and Florida. They, that was their province. That's where they resided at. And I'm going to tell you what led up to the war, and then I'm going to tell you about the war. Okay? I'm going to tell you, like, some instances that, that happened. Like, it was a guy, his name was Alexander Long. And the reason why I want to tell you this, because I want to show you that the same thing they were doing back in the day, they're doing it now. Alexander Long was a trader. He lived it in, in Cresno, close to the Uchi Indians. The Uchi Indians resided in South Carolina. The Uchi Indians, was, was they was powerful, and he would do business with them. He was a trader. He was a trader, and plus he owned his own store. So the Uchi Indians would do business with him, and... He would give the Uchi Indians a different price than he would give the Cherokee Indians. He would give the Cherokee Indians a lower price and give the Uchi Indians a higher price. The Uchi Indians confronted him. When the Uchi Indians confronted him, what he did is he, they began to fight. They got the best of him and pulled out a plug of his hair. He never forgot that. So he got his store and he moved from Cresno and he moved closer to the Cherokee Indians. Two years later, later, a, a Uchi Indian coming to his store, unwisely coming to his store. So when the Uchi Indian came into his store, he, he fought the Uchi Indian, got the best of this Uchi Indian, tied the Uchi Indian up, tied his, his hands, and tied his feet up. This happened between 1713 and 1714, right before the war. He tied his hands and his feet up, and he put the gunpowder up under him and blew him up. So Alexander Long got scared. So what he did is he told the Cherokee Indians, which was his friend, which, which he liked, he told them, we need to go and we need to kill these Uchi Indians. We need to go to Cresno and kill these Uchi Indians. He said, I will supply you with the guns and I will supply you with the, with the gunpowder. The Uchi Indians was like, cool, you're going to give us the gunpowder? You, you know, if you're going to do all of this, then okay, cool. We'll go ahead and roll. So they go to Cresno. The Uchi Indians and the Cherokee Indians begin to fight one another. The Cherokee Indians got the best of the Uchi Indians. The Uchi Indians, they ran them up into their own war, war house, the Uchi Indians, the war house. What had happened was they kept fighting when the Uchi Indians think that they, they wasn't going to win. What they did is 
they killed one another and committed suicide. Out of the deal, Alexander Long got five children and two women. See, when they tell you that we didn't fight like we was these docile people and we did not fight. Yeah, we did fight. We fought with them a lot. And this is why they had to build the school system to process your mind so you don't worry about that your 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 life that the life that your your real history. So they begin to commit suicide. And I say this story because see, they do the same thing today. You got Blood, you got Crips, you got Four Corner Hustlers, you got all kind of gang members. See, and the reason why you see this is because we have always been tribes like that. We've always been tribes. You got these, these different gang members, and they turn around, and all of a sudden, they got guns. 15, 16, 17-year-old boys that don't even, some of them don't even have a driver license, but got a gun. They got these guns. They supply these, these uh, young children with these guns. Sometimes the guns, it'd be a box of guns in the hood just there. And don't know that they're setting them up for failure. So what happened is the police officer going to kill somebody from another gang member. They think the gang member didn't do it, didn't did it, but don't know the police didn't did it. So what they do is they begin to kill each other with these guns they so-called found and don't know that the guns was there for them to find them. Be, so you can kill one another. Let me tell you another another instance that we don't know. There was two, uh, two uh, slave traders. I mean, um, yeah, they were slave traders and plus they was just traders. Their names was Anthony Probert and, and James Lucas. These was two white British men. What had happened is there was some Cumbie Indians. They didn't have no security. They didn't have anything. They just, they just was living on the land. So what Probert and what uh, Lucas did was took them into slavery. But see, one thing you don't understand is that when you took an Indian into slavery, you had to have a consent. You just couldn't come, come and kidnap them and put them into slavery. You had to have a consent from another Indian. So what happened is, when they put these people into slavery, they needed to get a consent. So what they did is they went to neighboring uh, Indians and tried to get them to consent. Some of them went along with it. With it, They met a guy, his name was John, no, he, his name was the Long Doctor. They tried to get him to consent to these Indian, these Combi Indians being, being into slavery. What had happened is the long doctor got mad. He was a well-known man. He got mad. And what he did is when they seen he was ready to fight, Probert and Lucas slid out and ran because they didn't want their lives taken. When they tell you that we just went along to get along, it's not true. A lot of us fought. A lot of these melanated men fought. And if melanated women understood that it didn't start with Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, it didn't start with Marcus Garvey. Your ancestors been fighting for you. The reason why they come in these hoods and get these young, young boys when they 14, 15, 16, and 17 is because they have to lock them up to get that warrior spirit out of them. This is why a lot of melanated young boys drop out of school. How, how do it look? Somebody telling you in so many words, you're not shit. You're not shit. And if you don't fall under us, you will never be shit. Now, if you follow us, you will, we'll, we'll probably give you something. And you got to jump over all kind of hoops to get the little, the little shit they going to give you. They had laws like takeaway laws. Laws where if you, if you was in debt, they can come in your house and they can take everything out your house. They can take everything out your house and, and sell it. And they had, they had um, laws where they had uh, forcible confiscation when you would, you know, they had people out here and they would till the land. If you didn't do your fair share, they can forcibly come in your house and take everything out your house and sell it. They had relationship debts where they could come and if your family and your friends, if you owe the debt, they can collect it from your family and friends. They had stuff like this. Even the city, they can collect it. 
The reason why this war took place is because the the the, the uh, Yamisi Indians they they was not gonna go out without a fight. You had two negotiators. The, first of all, let me just say this: the reason why this war took place, number one, it was trading abuse. The Yamisi Indians traded with the with the British colonists. The Yamisi Indians they normally had white tail deer. White tail deer went extinct in North Carolina and, and, and the Carolinas. So what had happened is, when the when the white tail tail deer went 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 extinct, they had nothing to trade with the British colonists. So what they would do, they would do things on credit. The Indians didn't know anything about credit or anything like that, but they would get their supplies on credit. And normally, what they got from the British was whiskey. They would get um, uh, tools. They would get guns, gunpowder. This is the things that they got from the um, from the British colonists. So when they no longer had the white-tailed deer and they was they was in debt, they was afraid of being taken into slavery. They fought. See, the story, the narrative that gets you is in reverse. They had they was building when the white-tailed tail deer went extinct. They was building rice plantations. They was um, it was like the British colonists was getting rich and the and the Indians was getting poor. And this was happening all over. So the Yamisi Indians was like, they not going out without a fight. But what lit the fire is a guy named John Wright. John Wright was a negotiator. John Wright and Thomas Nair. Thomas Nair wanted peace. John Wright wanted war. So John Wright wrote a letter to the Yamisi Indians and told them that when we get there, when the white man get there, we're going to kill your forehead chief. We're going to kill them first. Then we're going to take you and we're going to put you into slavery and take you to another country. You hear that? You hear that? Take you to another country. See, this is what they was practicing back then. That's why you can go to Africa and you can see somebody that look identical to you. That's the reason why. He told them that they are like women. So he said, in a matter of days, we're going to be and kill all of you. The Yamisi Indians got this letter. Okay. So then Thomas Nair comes and see Thomas, Rhett and Thomas Nair and John Wright didn't get along because John Wright had got, um, he had got um, fired. So him and, Th and Thomas Nair took his position. So they always fought with each other. A negotiator is what, who, it, it was like a judge. And what they did is when slaves, when, when, when Indians would be taken into slavery and it was some type, type of dispute, either they would, they would side with the Indian or they would side with the British colonists. So Thomas Nair, he was a negotiator back then at that time on April 15th, 1715. He was the negotiator. But John Wright was still trying to act like the negotiator. But those were the two main negotiators. And then there was two other men. And what had happened was when 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 John Wright wrote that letter, the Yumisi Indians was confused because Thomas Nair was coming there with peace. So they didn't want to be taken into war. So what they did is they went on ahead. Thomas Nair got there. John Wright got there with two other men, got there. These were the negotiators. And they came there and they were like, um, they were, uh, they, they, they ate, they went to sleep at the break of dawn before morning hit. The Indians, all the males was at one accord and they had, they, they painted themselves in red and black. Red and black mean it meant, meant death and blood and the, and the British colonists knew that. When they sink this, when they sink this, when they came out their tents and they sink this, it was two men that was able to es escape, and one of their names was Seymour Borrow. Bar and what he did, he just broke and ran. And when he broke and ran, one of the Indians, they got a musket, and that's like a bow and arrow, and shot it and shot him in his back and shot him uh, uh, through his neck, and it came out of his teeth, and it broke the front of his teeth. When he ran, when, when, when Seymour ran, Seymour Borrow, when he ran, he ran all the way to Port Royal. 
that day, the Indians, they killed, it was a hundred traders in, in the Carolinas. The Carolinas. They killed 90 of the hundred. And not to mention, John Wright, when he came, and John Wright was the one, one of the ones that got murdered. John Wright, when he came there, he was already in, in um, he was already in debt. The slaves he had, uh, he had to sell them in the plantation. All of these traders was in debt. Probert and Lucas, all of them was in debt because they were being sued also. When they tell you the, the Indians, we couldn't sue, we couldn't do this, they, they lie. They lie about our history. So what had happened is when Seymour, when he went to, before, okay, let me, let me bag back a little bit. The man that was unknown, Thomas Nair, the one that wanted peace, what had happened is he saw how they killed Thomas Nair. And Thomas Nair kept saying, my God, my God, and pleading with God. The Indians began to dance and say a dance, and they would say, my God, my God. These, and when they tell you that your man is weak, your man is not weak. It's just that your history, you don't know your history. They, what they did is with Thomas Nair, they cooked him for three days. They cooked him for three days until they allowed him to die. And he pleaded for his life. And when he went to sleep, they shook hands with him and everything. Said that everything was okay. But when he woke up, they was ready to kill and the thing about it from georgia from alabama from uh, from uh florida they was they begin to kill these british colonists all over the yamisi indian was indians then after when they then killed them then killed the the traders and the ones that was on on that land in charleston at that time the ones that was on that land and uh in april 15th 1715 the ones that was on that land they killed every last one of them Mass massacred every last one of them. Then they made their way to Port Royal. They made their way to P Port Royal. When they got there, the, the Seymour Barrow who got away told the governor, Craven, told him. And that's what saved the people because they was going to kill all of them too. That's what, because the, the Yamisi Indians wanted the British colonists off their land. So when the Yamisi Indians got there, it was a boat, and the boat was under investigation. They piled all their family and everybody in that boat, and they was on the sea when the Yamisi Indians got to Port Royal. So when the Yamisi Indians saw them, they surrounded the sea and began to shoot. Shoot their arrows, shoot their muskets at them. And what they did is they burned up all of their cattle, they killed all their horses, and burned down all of everything that was there, they burned it down. When they tell you that the black man ain't nothing and want us to disrespect, this is why I'm, I'm not quick to disrespect the melanated man, because that's who fought for you. Sometimes these people, before the war, when these Yamisi Indians, when they was going to hunt white tail deer, when they would come home, these settlers would sit up and take their whole family, take their whole family, and they would take the woman and the child and hold them as collateral. Because these Indians was in debt. They got tired of that. Just like we're tired right now. A lot of us is tired right now. One thing I'm going to tell you, like, like Dr. Blair, Dr. Um, Dilbert Blair, he said something. He said something, and I'm going to get off this live in a minute, but he said something that was, was very powerful. And he said, what I run into, the problem that I have, that I run into, is that when I tell the truth, it's a no-no. He said, when I, he said, it's going to come a time where the truth will be a yes, yes. He said, it's going to come a time where when they even utter a lie and try to utter a lie out of their mouth, your electromagnetic vibration will catch on to it quick and tune it out. And see, that's what's going on now. That's why this government is at a standstill. See, back about 20 years ago, 
we didn't have, none of us had a supernatural experience. So what the, the re reality that they gave us, we had to deal with that reality because we had no other reality. So we had to deal with that reality, the reality that they gave us. Now a lot of us have had supernatural experiences, so they can't come to us and tell us that this is the be all. We know it's not. We know that there's a higher power, and they, we know that it's more powerful than them. This is why they use trickery on you, because they know if they come at us full force, they will lose. They know this. That's why they don't do it. That's why everything they do, they use trickery because they have to be very fucking careful because they know who you are. They know the power you possess. And, and, and what's going on right now, the system is being, is being chopped down. Nobody cares about the present. We don't care about none of that. We don't care. And, and what's going on now is a lot of you will become leaders. This is why everything is being uncovered. Remember back in the day, about 20 years ago? Oh my God, and we was in love with celebrities. We go, oh my God, whatever they was doing, we wanted to know. We don't give a damn no more. Because now we know about the boule. Now we know everybody that is on TV, is if, if they give you a chance and you this color, we know you there because you are part of the boule. So we know that that is the gatekeeper. We understand that. And I'm going to say this. See, they, see, you got to peep game. When you peep game, then you can just look at something and laugh about it. That's just like the instance of Nicki Minaj. And I don't watch TV. And they said, she going to say, do the research. This lady been out since 2008. She ain't never said nothing logical. All of a sudden, she say something logical. See, everything is a script and it's a game. And once you catch on to that, then you will understand. That's bullshit. She said it because she was told to say it. Because she wouldn't have never said nothing like that if she wasn't told to say it. Because she know that can deaden her career. She knows she'll wind up dead somewhere if she say the wrong thing. Once you, once you sell your soul. See, the nature got a mind too. Nature, this universe will protect you. But the universe deal with, with authenticity. You have to be real. It ain't got nothing to do with the outer appearance. You have to be real with yourself. Once you be, be real with yourself, the universe will protect you. Just know who you are. And a lot of you are about to become leaders. This is why you're talking. This is why your chakras is open. Because you are the new leaders. And they're trying their best to fight it because some of you they can't mess with because you know who the hell you are. And be leery of people that's talking about how they so powerful in the spirit. Don't nobody care about you going and getting no colorful wig and you throwing on a colorful wig and you painting your face. No, it's more deeper than that. It's more deeper than that. Don't nobody care about that. It's a lot of people that's getting off into this. Because it's popular now. The reason why they're getting off into this is because they know this is the new norm. This is assumed this will be the new norm. If you if you if if you into this right now, you should know you should already have entities to come and talk to you. You should you should know about the supernatural and it should not scare you. If you are awakened, like you say you are. See, it's one thing to read a book. Some things you can't get out of a book. Some things got to happen and you got to learn it. Everything is not in a book. But it's a lot of stuff like, like the Yumisi War. I had to study it in order for me to understand it. This is your land. You, did, you never came from Africa. You never came from Africa. African and American and, and Aboriginals are two different, totally different people. And they want to cling us together because they know you could never search out your history trying to search it out in Africa. And the sad part about it, if you learn your people and know your people, all you got to do is, is look them up and everything is right there. The Yumisi War, what I just told you, is not hidden. I tell you things for you to study it yourself so then you know. It's a true war. 
and and what you don't know, your ancestors fought fought to the bitter end. The only main prison they have and have ever had was the school system and the prison system. This is why they have to get your young boys at a young age. Because what they got to do is they got to get that warriorism out of them. So they lock them up and hope somebody uh, 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 screw them. Bug break them. They hope that that happens. Know who you are because you are a powerful person. And see, they're not, they're not going to never tell you this. Because they want you to think you was, a, you was a slave and you was at the bottom of a ship. That's not your history. Your history is more powerful than that. These melanated men, if, if melanated women really studied their true history, really studied it, and went past Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and Marcus Garvey and went far past it, you would know your men fought for you. Men would, some tribe, Indian tribes would go out and fight. They come back from the swamps. And these, and when the British colonists, when after when they would get their ass whooped, they would come back and kill up all their fucking women and children. This is what they had to go through back then. No, I don't care about. Let me tell you something. If we if we knew the truth, that's just like a lot of women say. Oh, melanated men ain't shit. These, and then you be talking about Aboriginal men. Let me tell you something. If you knew the truth, if you know knew the truth about how life is they not gonna never tell you don't you know when you sitting up here you with a man in your 20s you and that man is still a child you're not considered an adult until you're 30. you're not considered an adult some of your your organs is not even fully developed in your 20s see this is the stuff that they don't tell you they don't tell you the most retarded children don't come from older women having children it come from younger women they don't tell you this They don't tell you this. You got to study. I'm going to put the book up. I'm going to put the book up that I read, but I, I had to study other things too. But I'm going to put the book up that I read. The Yamisi War. I'm going to put the book up. Because they very powerful. They even fought with the Iroquois Indians back in 17, I think that was 1713. No, 1712 to 1713. They was very powerful and they was warriors. And they did not take no shit. They did not take no shit from nobody. But these Indians fought not to be in war. I mean, be, be in slavery. This is the whole reason why these wars was taking place. Because they fought so we didn't have to be in slavery. Those are the ones that fought for your freedom. And what had happened is, because they could not contain them, they had to tell you a lie with a pen and a piece of paper, and that's what they done. You got to study. No, everything is not in a book, but you got to study your history. Then you will have more respect when it comes to the melanated man, because he's being destroyed on purpose. He's being destroyed on purpose. And be careful. Let me tell you something. Everything I done told you today, I got to study it. So when I put it out here, it's not a price on knowledge. It should never be a price on knowledge. Because the universe, like I say, is authentic. The universe take care of its own. The universe, once the universe tell you something, it ain't never told me to ask for money. So I don't do it. I'm not going to tell one group of people, you know what? Uh, you go here. And, and, and you pay this type of money, and I'm going to tell you some more information. The way our people is looking out here, you don't have room to do that. You don't have room to do that. I don't ask, for, ask, ask nobody for nothing. I, I was in, I'm invited to an event this, event this weekend. They offered to pay for my hotel. I ain't asked them. I, I paid for my own hotel. I don't ask nobody for nothing. Unless if I ask you for something, that means I need it. And if I ask you for something, I'm going to ask a certain person. I, and, and, you know, my whole thing is the universe will take care of its people. The only thing, if you awaken and you got all kind of wisdom and knowledge, give it out to the people and wake them up. Because those are the next leaders. 
the people out here right now that's on 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 Facebook and on YouTube, and 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 your sh your channel's being shut down. You are the new leaders. You are the new leaders. The system the system is being disrupted because of you. And the only reason the universe is changing is because of people like us that say, hell no, we ain't going. That don't participate in they BS no more. I don't own a TV or a radio is not in my fucking house. I don't have one. When I'm up, if any woman that can be in the house all day by herself without a TV and a radio, don't mess with her. Don't mess with her. See, because then you at peace with yourself. Peace is everything. I love y'all, and I want y'all to have a safe day. A safe day, and 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 I hope you enjoy yourself. Goodbye.